will talk about the essential technique of painting wet on wet with watercolor, but on a different subject than in the previous video, we will be painting a nighttime cityscape. I do apologize, I will be reusing a sheet of paper that I messed up when I tried to paint a previous landscape. I'm sure you will agree with me, I hate wasting watercolor paper. So there is a bit of the initial wash for the sky, but I think it will work perfectly for this painting. It's fairly light. It doesn't make any sense to waste this paper. Let's continue working with what we have already. The photo was taken by a friend of mine, so I posted it in the community tab on my channel, so you can download it and use it for your own painting. What I sketched out is the outline of that dark city. I did not draw in any details or anything like that. I give my paper a very light spritz from my spray bottle, just so the colors don't sink into the fibers right away. And I am applying a very light wash on the sky to darken it very slightly. Like I said, I already have a transparent layer of cobalt blue, a bit of um, turquoise blue, some opera pink and some yellow. So the top is more or less okay. I put another layer there on the top, but the bottom obviously needs to be a lot darker. So I'm applying another layer of orange that I got from mixing new gamboge with opera pink. And a layer of purple. There's a lot of kind of warm purple clouds in the sky. And that purple I mixed from cobalt blue and opera pink. So very quick wash dropping in the purple clouds into a layer of very transparent cobalt blue mostly water that i have already applied the clouds need to be soft so wet on wet technique is suitable in this case and now i'm making a mistake of starting to paint the outlines of the buildings into the wet surface you see the paint is starting to run which i don't want in reality the outline is very sharp so we need to have patience here and dry the painting before we continue working so basically constantly evaluating if I need sharp edges or soft and then picking the technique depending on that, painting wet on wet or painting wet on dry, which is what I should do when painting the outline of those dark buildings. You see I'm drying the sky with my little heating device. You can also use a hair dryer or just walk away and wait a little bit. And now we are ready to work on the city itself, which will be the most interesting part of this painting. I need to create an interesting sharp outline I'm using dark colors like indigo, also a color that's called moon glow is suitable here. If you don't have it, just use some sort of a dark purple that you have, maybe even mix it with the indigo or neutralize it with complementary color. As usual, the color itself is not important. It's important to create an intense dark outline of all that stuff that we see in the reference photo. You see, I'm using my flat angled brush because that allows me to create straight lines very easily, a lot of straight lines in a cityscape. And it also, when I turn it on the side, it allows me to quickly fill the fairly large areas in my painting. I have a light pencil drawing, as you saw. I started with the outline of the buildings, but I am mostly drawing with a brush. So my brush has very little water and a lot of pigment, so it works kind of like a marker, I guess I would say. You can imagine this is a brush tip pen and you're just drawing with the brush, drawing the outline of all the buildings. And if we look closely at the photograph, the buildings, of course, are not solid black, right? They may seem so when we look at them first, but then as our eyes adjust, we start seeing variations of the tone there and we start seeing lighter areas and dark areas we're starting to see some details actually the buildings on the left are darker than on the right there is still a little bit of light on the right side of the street that's why you see as i'm going down those buildings i am lightening the wash i started mixing in some cobalt blue some ultramarine blue some turquoise because I want that variation of color. I don't want everything to be very monochromatic. And I want some variation of tone. So using those lighter colors allows me to vary the tone. Mm -hmm. 
I am not paying attention to the lights on the cars or the street lights. I will add them last, those details. Right now I'm working on the overall shape of that dark city on the bottom of my page. And I can tell already that the sky is way too light. I'm sure you see that too. So we will need to add more color on the bottom portion of the sky. And you will see how I will do that in just a minute. So there is the street here on the bottom. It's hard to see what's going on there. There's a ton of cars there. But we don't want the details because one of the things we know about painting painting nighttime or painting something that's in the shadow is that it's hard to see the de details and we don't need to show those details if we do show them it's going to just not look right i got a little bit carried away and i painted that right side building probably a little too high maybe not that's um, i'm working on the cupola so i can figure out how high I need to go. I think I can cover this. It might, I might be fudging just a little bit, but it doesn't matter. Okay, yeah, that was fine. I got nervous there for a second. So as you see, by varying the angle of my brush, I am very quickly creating the outline of the buildings. And then as I go down, I slightly lighten my, my color, my tone. And as I'm dropping colors into each other, I'm working wet on the wet in this case. The first layer that creates that wet surface is actually color and then I'm adding more colors into that. I am able to achieve the intensity of color, of tone. I'm getting dark tones and that gives me that illusion of a dark street at the very end of daylight, the few remaining rays of sun that illuminate the city. I do need to figure out what to do with the street. I'm not going to paint, obviously, all these cars one by one. I need to treat them as a large form. And the ones on the right are obviously going away from us, so they look like dark silhouettes with some red lights on them. And the ones on the left are coming towards us. So we will see the headlights, but in general, it will be just the overall mass of something so that's what i'm doing right now with a small brush i am trying to create an illusion of those lines of cars and their headlights are reflecting in the asphalt so that's why i'm dropping in some orange into my painting let's paint that street light this is kind of the focal point of my composition that um, pole with the street light and the traffic light not painting the red signal we will add that later and even though I try to keep the lower portions of the building lighter, the left side is very dark. We basically can't see anything that's going on there. Just maybe a few details closer to us. We see the horizontal lines on the buildings going away from us in perspective. And we see some of the columns. There is a colonnade on the front, but we can't really see anything else. I need to do something about the sky. I'm going to drop in some more of that orange that I mixed from New Gamboge and um, Upper Pink. I am dragging some paint from the street light. I didn't let it dry completely, but it's okay because that looks like those clouds that we see in the distance. So I am careful not to smudge too much, but if it smudges, it's going to be my clouds. And I need to neutralize that tone anyways, because even though it seems like the sky is very bright and glowing, in reality, the color is pretty subdued. If you squint and look at it, it's not a bright orange. It's fairly neutralized. All right, this looks much better. We'll evaluate the sky again after it dried. I do need to do something with this street. It's way too light. The asphalt does catch the last rays of sun and the cars provide some light but it needs to be darker than what I have in the painting. So let's define that mass of cars a little bit better with a smaller brush with intense tone and let's darken the foreground. Not all of it, but mostly the areas where the buildings meet the sidewalk because we want to ground those buildings. They can't just hang up in the air. These corners, the sidewalks will be very, very dark because no light penetrates there.
So the sky after it dried of course lightened and I was still satisfied with the intensity of the sunset. If you compare the lower portion of the sky with the top, there is quite a bit of difference in saturation. So I added another layer of paint there. And before I added the final details to my painting, I made sure that everything is bone dry. I used my little heater and I waited a little bit when the paper felt room temperature and it wasn't glistening and it wasn't cold i added those uh, cables and the the wires that we see in the city with a liner brush when you do this you have to be decisive you can change your mind midway so just do a few swift brush strokes you see i have some interruptions and stuff it doesn't matter it will look fine just be decisive and use a thin brush and obviously lots and lots of color basically no water at all for lines like that but i think they add a lot of visual interest they also accentuate the perspective i did not draw the very top one because it's a little distracting so i omitted the very top wire but i drew the rest of them and to paint the lights on the cars and the street light we of course need white gouache i used it in two ways i painted a white spot for the street light because i needed red but if i start mixing red with white gouache i will get pink which i don't need so i painted white first to kind of bring back the the white surface and then i will paint the red light on top of it the lights on the buildings and on the cars can be painted by mixing white gouache with different colors of watercolor with me some of them will be more yellow some of them more green and just kind of random little dots here and there just to, to show the, the city lights. The viewer doesn't need to know exactly what it was, you know. You don't have to figure out all this information, but we do need some accents. They bring the painting to life. A pedestrian crosswalk so just a few final touches to add the highlights to add those bright spots on the painting and maybe just a couple of lighter lines be very careful don't use white to add just a few details in the foreground like i said we can see the colonnades on some of the buildings so i brought them back by using a white gouache mixed with a lot of blue watercolor off camera I made one correction to the painting initially that street light was sitting on the sidewalk but of course if you think about it if it were sitting on the sidewalk it would be super high up in the air so it actually needs to go off the page you will see it in just a second in the finished painting so I brought that street light all the way down to the bottom edge of the paper and my painting was done I hope you enjoyed this demonstration I hope you will try painting from this reference photo. Like I said, you can find it in the community posts on my channel. And if you post it online, make sure and tag Tamir Up Studio so I can see your work. I would love to see what you've done with this photo, your own interpretation. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one here on Tamir Up Studio's channel. Help other artists to see this video by liking or sharing it. To see future videos, subscribe and click the bell button to be notified when they're published. Thanks again and stay creative!